Okay, welcome back. Today we're gonna go over the engine installed in Foxtrot Sierra Bravo Golf. And on the second video, we're gonna go over some tips and techniques to make your engine compartment installation better. So let's get started with the overview. So we'll start in the back of the engine and work our way all the way around until we get to the back accessory case to show you everything that's in the engine compartment. So right here on the top, just a convenient location for it, is the electronic ignition. So this is a Lightspeed Plasma 3 ignition. Uh, it operates the top spark plugs. So these four wires will go into the top plugs, which are iridium spark plugs. And then the magneto would do the bottom plugs on each cylinder. So every cylinder has two sources of ignition. Uh, next to that, we've got our dipstick. Holds eight quarts. I use 20W50 Phillips with cam guard in it. Changing the oil about every 25 or 50 hours or four months, whichever comes first. Uh, next to that, we have a heater for the winter time, just located here so we can access it through the oil door, which would be up here. And this has two sumps on the bottom of the oil sump. And it also has a circular band that go around, goes around each cylinder. So each cylinder has a heater band as well. So really effective for winter heating. Uh, tucked in here a little bit is uh, manifold pressure. So the manifold pressure will come off the back of the engine here. And this is a braided line. And this fitting here is just a way for it to go get focus there. So the fitting there is to go from a braided line to a hose fitting and then that's going to go into the cockpit, into the engine monitor and into the electronic ignition. On the back of the engine, our oil cooler is firewall mounted. So we got a four inch duct hose coming off the back of the cooling baffle and that's going to go into a little butterfly valve that we can adjust from the cockpit to adjust oil temperature in flight. And that's that valve uh, that you see in the back there that electrically operated um, arm there that opens and closes the butterfly valve that's inside of the oil cooler. So obviously that attaches to the oil cooler and all the brown lines that you see here with the integrated fire sleeve are A and 8 oil lines that go to the back of the engine. So there's the oil cooler there. It's quite a big one in this one. It's the same one that most guys use in RV10 because it's a high compression, uh, high power engine. All right, working our way up, like I said, it's an IO360. It's A1B6 engine. I meaning fuel injected, O meaning horizontally opposed, 360 meaning the cubic uh, displacement of, of all the cylinders. And this is an angled valve engine. You can tell by the trapezoid shape, rocket cover, boxes here in a parallel valve engine they're more square so this is an angle valve engine normally 8 to 1 8.7 to 1 compression which gives you about 200 horsepower this one is 10 to 1 compression which brings it up to about 220 and then it's port flow matched and polished inside and a bunch of little goodies and that takes it around kind of the 235 and the highest dyno that we saw in it was a 250.6 all right continuing around here on the bottom of each cylinder, you have an oil return line. So that goes from the bottom of the cylinder back into the casing. And the red lines you see here are the ignition wires from the magneto going up into the front two cylinders here. And then all these braided lines are the cylinder head temperature and the exhaust gas temperature probes. So the ceramic coated polished ones here are air intakes for each cylinder. The black, they're also ceramic coated, are the exhausts. And then here you have the exhaust gas temperature probe on each exhaust pipe. See the one in the front is probably the easiest one to see. And then you have the cylinder head temperature probes um, back behind where the actual spark plug is. So there's the spark plug on the back of the engine right here. 
And then there's the cylinder head temperature gauge just inside of that up there. So these are mass electrode aviation plugs that we use for the magneto and then for the electronic ignition we use the radium uh, automotive racing plugs. All right, continuing around, uh, we got the plenum, which we'll talk about uh, in a second, but we got some fresh air or rather cockpit heated air in the front. So we got a little, um, a little mesh in there. Where the, the fresh air will then go down. We'll go into the heat muff, get heated by the exhaust, which is about 1300 degrees, and then come out here. And then that will go to a control valve in the cockpit. So just to talk about the plenum for a little bit, um, ours obviously is uh, carbon fiber built and obviously painted and it has these chrome bars along the side. The other way you can cool one of these engines of course is using baffling material. So you actually have a rubber seal all the way around that will then hit the top of the cowling and create pressure so that the cooling air coming through the front on each side of the engine gets forced down into the cylinder on all sides. So these are just fresh air intakes on the front for cooling. So they're air cooled engines, mostly by obviously ram air, but the fuel and the oil does add to some of the cooling of, of these Lycoming engines as well. All right, underneath that, we got the alternator, which runs off a belt that goes around the flywheel. And this is the intake of the engine here. So inside we have an air filter and after that filter, it goes into the fuel injector and then into the engine. So we got the fuel injector here and there's the throttle connection uh, right here on this side. So that's the throttle. And this little uh, control arm here is to open up this back door uh, so that in the event that we got the air filter clogged, either hitting a bird or ice or something, we can bypass the filter and just suck air, warm air from the engine. So it's an emergency kind of bypass system. All right, so same on this side, fresh air in for cooling. Underneath on this side, we have the starter. The starter is that whole whole piece that goes all the way back to the engine here. You need to be quite a good starter for these engines because this one is 10 to one compression. Uh, so I think this is the 149 NL uh, starter from Skytech. And there's the fuel injection on the back. And this here would be your uh, mixture lever, putting that arm forward and back for idle cutoff or full rich. And then our start cable going to the back. On this side, pretty much the same. We've got our oil drain lines, our spark plug, our exhaust gas temperature probes, and our cylinder head temperature probes tucked behind. Of course, we got the fire sleeve fuel line going from the fuel injection back into the fuel pump behind the engine. On the left side of the engine, we have all the wiring and all the cables required manifold pressure going into the cockpit that needs to run to gauges. <clears throat> Behind that, we have our heater valve. So this is where it comes from that heat muff on the exhaust and the temperature control is done through here through a, through a, a, a rotary switch in the cockpit. On the back, we have cooling for the fuel pump. So that goes into the fuel pump shroud, which is actually uh, covered to add a bit more cooling. I'll try and show you more with a little light here. So there's the fuel pump shroud there, the blue cover, and you got your fuel pressure line coming off that. Above that, the black one is the magneto. Let's put a light up here so you guys can see a little bit better. So above the fuel pump on the top here is the magneto. And of course that fires the bottom plugs on each cylinder as I've described already. Oh, the little cube on the bottom there, I should show you that too. 
So that fuel line running from the firewall up to here, that is the fuel flow meter. And then that goes into the other side of the fuel pump. And again, this is your throttle, your throttle cable running up to the right side of the engine. You've got a fuel drain coming out here from the bottom of the engine that also comes from the back of the fuel pump. And that's just wide off and dumps overboard. Uh, don't really notice any fuel coming from it, honestly, but there's, there's a little bit of fuel that can kind of be sitting in there kind of after shutdown. Yeah, on the top of the engine, we have the oil collector. So the breather line comes out the back of the engine here, goes into the oil collector, and then actually goes back into the engine uh, through this port here. And then it is plumbed down into the exhaust. So it goes into the exhaust uh, right here. And that's from anti-splat. Apparently adds a little bit, of, little bit of pressure, a little bit of power to the engine. And on the back, we have the uh, oil filter. We have oil temperature on the back there. And then this is uh, for a manual tachometer uh, attachment, if you so wish. And then up on the firewall, we have plumbed uh, fuel pressure sensor and oil pressure sensor uh, that go, then goes obviously to the engine monitor. So that's pretty much it for the overview of the engine. Um, it does have the, the plenum on the top here, which we'll talk about in the next video, some benefits uh, of that. Um, but if you have any questions about the engine, let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.